to exciting yellow assembly tonight. It's still Resurrection Sunday. Praise God, we're overcoming for more than a conqueror tonight. God is faithful. God is still healing and still delivering tonight. He come to set the captives free. Thank you guys for coming back out on a good old cold, uh, a good old cold April afternoon. May God richly bless you. I know that He will. But that's what God does. He loves you. He's going to bless you tonight. He's going to touch your body, change your mind, renew your heart tonight. He wants to feel you. He wants to touch in every area, everywhere you hurt tonight. God wants to come in and minister to you. So, Lord bless you. Lord love you. Thank you guys for turning in tonight. For those that are turning in on Facebook tonight, turn your radio off so I can hear up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good tonight. God is faithful. I want to read a scripture here found in the book of Psalms, the 93rd chapter. I like this. He says, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, and it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established from old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up the Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lifted the way. But the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, the mighty waves of the sea. And thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. I, that's the God we serve tonight. No matter how rough it may get, our God is greater still. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Let's just have the Lord just let him have his way. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, we are rejoicing. Lord, we are still in celebration mode tonight. Lord, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the praise. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, bring us together with one mind and one accord tonight. Lord, if there be any sick, Lord, I pray they be healed tonight. Lord, I pray tonight, God, any may be a dismayed or discouraged tonight. Lord, let them know that you're the God of hope. Lord, I pray the Spirit of God. Lord, if any be lost that's watching tonight, Lord, Lord, I pray, get a hold of their heart. Lord, deliver, bring salvation to their hearts and their homes tonight, wherever they may be. Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit bring in our family from the north, the south, the east, yeah. and the west tonight. Father, we're calling in the people. We're calling in the kingdom of light. Lord, the overpower. Lord, we come against the spirit of darkness tonight. Lord, I pray that you would frustrate the plot of the enemy. Lord, I pray, destroy the works of darkness. Destroy it tonight. Lord, all the works of the demonic forces. Father, we pray tonight. Lord, you reign over over all power. You reign over all principality. Lord, you reign tonight. Glory to God. Father, we love you. We just invite your presence. Lord, up on these grounds. Lord, up through the internet tonight. Lord, have your way. Lord, tonight we celebrate. We give you our love. We give you our ultimate praise. We magnify you in Jesus' name. And the whole church said amen. amen. Come on tonight, praise team. Let's worship the Lord.
aren't you glad that he lives? He lives forevermore. He lives to ever make intercession for you. I was back there just praying while we go, and the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, there's somebody here tonight that needs a healing. Somebody needs a healing in your body tonight. God wants to touch you. I feel the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to touch your infirmity tonight. It may be a migraine. It may be an infectious disease. Right? I don't know. But I know this, that my God is able. My God is able tonight. He said that by His stripes you are healed tonight. All right, where you are, I want you to raise your hand toward heaven right now. And I want you to believe it may be you. It may be somebody in your family. It may be my Lord. I want you to just believe right now. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Father, I take authority over every infirmity. Lord, I take authority over every disease. My Lord. Lord, Lord, I pray the power and the anointing destroy that yoke tonight. Lord, I come against what the enemy is trying to disrupt. Lord, I pray for health and I pray for healing. Lord, I pray for the physical body to line up and to straighten up right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, we stand on the authoritative word of God. Lord, and I believe right now, Lord, you have spoken. Lord, and it is done. It is finished tonight, Lord. Lord, you bear those stripes of Calvary. And Father, I believe right now, Lord, I believe. Lord, that under the sound of my voice, through the air in this parking lot, Lord, there's people that are being set free right now. Lord, I thank you for coming. I thank you for touching these lives. Lord, I thank you that you are a healer. Lord, I magnify you and I give you praise and I give you glory in Jesus' holy name. I believe it and we're calling it done right now. Somebody give him praise. Give him praise for touching your body. Give him praise for touching your life right now. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. By faith we receive. By faith we receive it right with my Lord. Somebody shout. If you feel like God is touching, just shout a little bit right now. Tell the devil it ain't no more, devil. Not today, devil. Not today. Right now. Right now, Lord, I've been touched. Hallelujah. Whoo, my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Look at your neighbor tonight. Tell what you love them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I love you tonight. I appreciate you. We're going to make it. Thank you guys for being faithful to drive in church. Thank you for coming out, being a part of our worship service. I love corporate prayer. I love corporate worship tonight. Thank you for your continual giving and the tithes and the offerings and the support of the church finances. We keep moving forward. Thank you guys for your faithfulness, inviting people. Thank you for watching the internet tonight and, and Facebook. Thank you for tuning us in to your radio to 88.5 and listening to the Word of God. The Word of God has got some hope to it. It's got truth tonight. We believe that in Jesus' name. I love you and I appreciate you very much tonight. It's a joy to be your pastor here at Yellow Assembly. Good things are ahead for us. We're believing that the best is yet to come. And I want to say a special thank you again to all of our all of our staff making this happen. All the work goes on behind the scenes. And so bless you guys. Lord love you tonight. I've got a we got a special treat tonight. I tell you, we've got a good special friend of mine, the Reverend Tim Squire. Come on up here, Brother Tim. I tell you, I love this guy. We go way back. I love him like a brother tonight. I've asked him to come and share his heart with us tonight. So we have a big welcome to the Reverend Tim Squires tonight. Don't know really how I got roped into this tonight. Uh, you said I do. Uh, yeah, I said I do. My wife got roped into that too sometime, and she said I do, and she's got stuck with me. But, uh, God. You know, I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful for you to uh, allow me to come up here and be a part of this. Um, I got a long, a lot right here to, to get through, um, so I'm just going to get into it. I'm going to. Uh, I'm not real fiery preacher or anything like that. Thank you. 
John 10, chapter 10, uh, verse 10, and it says there that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus said he come to give you life and that more abundantly. Yep, right. So now we have to look at the title of my message again, quick and self-explainable, the wounds of life and the power of Jesus Christ, amen? Yes, yes. So we're looking at, uh, I want to look at this, this is really split into two talking about the enemy and what he's seeking to do to you and, and what God has desire for your life. So I'm going to that full small about the steal, kill, and destroy. Because in order to deal with wounds in our life, we have to first identify what their wounds are and how they are and where they come from. So we know that when you steal, you know, the, the enemy comes to steal from us. So I remember one time when I was young, and uh, I, I lived in an apartment building, and you know, I lived right up against this alleyway. And I was always getting in trouble with the law and different things like that. And, and I remember one time I took my trash out to the alley, and I threw my trash in the dumpster and went back in. Well, there's a cop cutting down the street on this alley and stopped me as I was coming out of it. And he said, he said, what are you doing? I thought, man, I didn't do nothing. You know, I'm not in no trouble or nothing. I said, all I'm doing is throwing my trash away and I'm going back to my place over here, right? And he said, uh, you're throwing your trash over here in the dumpster, right? And he goes, I said, yeah. And he said, well, next time I get you doing that, I'm going to arrest you for stealing. And I thought to myself, man, they're going to get me for anything they can. You know, here I am. I don't got nothing in my hands. I don't got nothing that they can get me for. But yeah, he's still going to arrest me for stealing. And, you know, and he let me go and everything else. And I said, well, you know, I, I said, I don't know why you're doing this, you know. And he said, well, he said, is that your dumpster? I said, no, it's not. He said, well, somebody paid for the space in that dumpster. You're throwing your trash in it, so you're stealing those space. Wow. So he said, if uh, I catch you doing it again, I'm going to arrest you for stealing. So I went back to my thing. Well, later on, through life, when I started studying the Word of God and, and, you know, letting the Holy Spirit deal with me, he brought this back to my remembrance. And he said, you know, when that uh, chief of police up there said that he was going to arrest you for stealing me, I said, yeah. He said, that's what Satan does. I said, really? And he goes, yeah. And he said, see, you was bought with a price. And he said, I paid the price. God would buy that space. And he said, when you allow drugs, the enemy to come into your life and allow him to dump your trash in your life, he said, he's stealing the space that I paid for. So now, now we know really that's just one way Satan steals from us. This, this, this is just this is just kind of scraping back just full scale of uh, really how this works. But um, keep it quick. I'm going to go on to steal, uh, kill. And he comes to kill. And uh, how does he do that? Leviticus 7 and 11, 17 and 11, it talks about the, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And that uh, the life is in the blood, though. And I got to think about that, and, and God dealt with me, you know, a while back and stuff, talking about the blood, and and uh, this is really, you know, how can you, how can you really explain anything about Christ without explaining about the blood, you know? So, uh, you know, when when Job, when he was attacked, Satan, he called Satan, Satan went up before God. And he said, what have you been doing? And the Lord asked him, he said, well, I've been going to and fro, around the vault, you know, but walking up and down in it, you know, and, and we know that he was out to steal, kill, and destroy, you know what the enemy does. And he asked, he said, have you considered my servant Job? And he said, well, you got a hedge of protection around me. You all know the story, you know. And what was interesting about that is when he was allowed to tempt Job, and see, the devil can't come into your life unless you give him a legal right to walk in your life, you know? 
but when he came against Job, Job actually gave him a little right to come in to, to torment him more than what he should have. But when he came in, one of the first things that Satan knew that he had to do was he cut off the bloodline. He cut off the, because he was a man that used to always uh, make the sacrifices for the atonement of his sins and for his family. And the Satan knew that if he could stop the blood, that he could kill, you know. And without the blood, there was no, nothing there. So, uh, you know, one thing that, 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 gave, that Job gave Satan a little right to is the words that he spoke, you know, after the blood was taken away. And that was the thing that I had greatly feared, and that's in Job 3.25. He said, the thing that I have greatly feared has come upon me. And when, when Job opened his mouth and spoke the words that he was afraid and he allowed that fear to come into his life, it gave Satan a legal right to come in and do what he had to do. It wasn't until after he made another blood sacrifice until uh, when, when the, you know, uh, the blessings come back upon him. So we see that when the blood is cut off, what can happen? Just look at Job's life. The whole thing is destroyed. He seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. It's destroyed. You know, if something's broken, you can mend it. But if something's destroyed, you have to you have to get rid of it. It's all over. Now, uh, when we look at destroyed, I'm just going to give you three definitions that I looked up, and it says putting into an existence of something by damaging or attacking it. Satan will come against us. The enemy will come against us and try to put it into us. Damage Jordan attacking us. Number two, to harm someone emotionally or spiritually. Now, it's pretty important right here that it's it's separated from emotionally and spiritually because it really deal, deal with two different entities though. Number three, it says uh, the definition was defeat someone utterly. To defeat someone utterly. What does that really mean? Is to defeat them to the utmost. You know, Satan is not happy if when if he can cut the blood of Jesus Christ off from the wall, he can't allow that to happen. He's not satisfied with your spirit being dead. You know? He wants to get into your mind, your will, your emotions, you know. He wants to destroy and give you some suicidal thoughts. He wants to give you some fear and some anxiety and some stress to go with it. You know, he's not satisfied. Then if he can get a hold of your mind, he's not satisfied with that either. You know, he wants to destroy your body. He seeks to, he seeks to defeat you to the utmost. Amen. So, uh, when Satan attacks, we end up getting wounded. Amen. You know, it's just, it's just part of doing battle. Uh, the thing is, is we give Satan too much credit sometimes. You know, sometimes it ain't always you know, a wound from the enemy. You know, the choices we make in life also we get wounded from. So we need to identify the wounds. And, you know, if I was in an accident and I went out here and I was laying on the ground, I was bloody and everything else, one of the first things they would do once they found out that I had a pulse, one of the first things they would do is they would get out a pair of scissors and cut my clothes off. Why would they do that? They wouldn't do it to embarrass you. They don't do it to, uh, you know, to see if I went to the gym with a member of Planet Fitness or anything like that, you know what I mean? You know, they don't care about that. They see you're full of blood and everything else. It's like they're trying to identify the wounds that you have. And to be able to identify the wounds that you have, sometimes you have to remove and peel back a little in order to see what's underneath. Amen. So, um, that being said, it's important to know um, how to identify them wounds and, and uh, going forward with that. So um, in Genesis 1 and 26, it says that we are made in the image of God. He said, let us make man in our image, in, in our likeness, you know. And he said, let's give him dominion. Well, when you look up uh, that, we know that he's talking to let us make man in our image, you know, in our image. He's talking about God. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God, God Jesus is at the right hand of God right now, you know, in that, then God uh, sent his Son to come down and die for us, right, so we know that they're separate, he comes down, when he was baptized, he said, God looked down again, he said, this is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased, amen, so then he'd go on, and uh, even when he was hanging on the cross, he said, 
that God had torn his head away from because he couldn't look upon sin. And then Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why is thou forsaken me? You know? And then he, when he was resurrected from the dead, and he said, It's better for me to ascend by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can't come. You know? So we know, you know, that, you know, it says not to grieve the Holy Spirit. So we know that they can be God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and they can be several places. So then, if one made up in the same likeness as that, that means that we all three fault being too. You know, so we got we got the body, we got our soul, we got our spirit, you know. And they all three different entities. We have a spirit, we are a spirit that possesses a soul that we live in a body. You know? So in order to identify what wounds we have, we first have to identify what part of the body in the in you know that we we are actually wounded with. So we can have a you know, we can have a body, a physical body that's in great shape. And our spirit man can be completely dead when the soul can be wounded really bad, you know. On the outside, you can't really tell it, you know. But, you know, on the flip side of that, you can have a body that's kind of run down and not in the best shape. Probably like me, you know, I know I'm a little out of shape, you know. But, praise God, I'm working on that. Thanks to keto. But anyway, you know, we... We can have a body a little bit run down, but our spirit can be perfect because Jesus sees us through the blood, and and our soul can be good in good shape, you know. So what really what really makes a difference is the blood flow and the water, the oxygen that comes into our bodies. See, so it's pretty easy to identify a, a body being wounded. You can look at a bullet wound, you see somebody got some stab, somebody got hit, you know, with a baseball bat or something like that. This is, you know, uh, those things that, you know, you can tell, you know, that somebody has been wounded or you can tell when somebody got a wound or a puncture wound or something because it's physical, you can look at it, you can feel it, you know. So it's not too hard to identify a body or a physical body wound. However, how do you identify a soul wound? A soul wound or uh, pretty much emotional, you know. Our soul rim or is a mind, will, and emotion. That's what makes up our soul. For instance, if I'm laying in bed, oh man, I woke up, my alarm's going off, you know, I hit it for the 15th time, I don't want to get up, oh, I'm tired, you know what I mean? My body just does not want to get out of bed because I'm tired, right? And I'm just saying, you know, I just don't got the will to get up. I don't. I just don't feel like getting up today. You know, that's my body speaking. My my spirit man inside is saying, "This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's get up and rejoice and be glad in it." Come on, He's trying to drag me up out of bed. Now, the deciding factor with that really is your mind, will, and emotions. That falls underneath your soulless realm. So when you look at your soulless realm, you say, "You know, uh, I really don't have the will to get up. I don't really feel like getting." Up. Your soul is deciding with your body, you know, two to one actually wins in this boat. So now I'm going to end up laying in bed, missing out on what God has for me because my soul and my body is agreeing on the right. If you flip that, you're more God conscious and sin conscious, and you look at it and you say, you know what? I need to get up. I need to do the right thing. I need to go. I need to, you know, praise God today and do things of that nature. If you do that, then your soul is real, your soul is fighting with your spirit. Therefore, your spirit wins out. See, you have to get your mind in, in, in Romans chapter 12. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of the God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable, reasonable service. He said, be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Now, if you were saved and you, and you, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I better shut up. So now we're looking at we're looking at the soulish rim, soulish rim, and you said, what are soulish wounds? The soul wounds all you get, you end up with oppression, depression, fear, anxiety, stress, a hot temper, you know. Uh, hate, bitterness, you know, uh, you end up with these things, but 
the, the oppression, depression, your fear, your anxiety, your temper, your mental sickness, your suicidal thoughts, them are all symptoms of wounds. Yeah. I'm a, by trade, I'm a corrosion technologist at an ACE level three. That means that I go out and I look at paint for a living. Whoopee doo, you know what I mean? It's not a really exciting job. But, you know, I take pride in that, you know what I mean? Because I protect the world's assets. That's what I look at. But anyway, if you take corrosion and you put a layer of paint over the top of it without dealing with the corrosion, what's going to happen? Is the corrosion still going to be there? It's not going to do you no good to just put a piece, some paint over the top of it and leave it alone because underneath that, it's still got corrosion. If you deal with oppression, depression, fear, anxiety, stress, temple, which I do have a temple, my wife's been helping me with that. Um, to get rid of it, that is. Uh, sickness, suicidal thoughts, things of that nature. You look at them things, and them are all just symptoms. Them are just like putting pain on the top of corrosion. They don't take care of nothing. You know, you have to look underneath that, look at the corrosion. The corrosion is, it, it talks about offense, bitterness, hate, unforgiveness, and all these things stem from pride. You cannot have offense without having pride. You cannot have bitterness without having pride. You cannot have hate without having pride. And you cannot have unforgiveness without having pride. All these things have to do with the choices that we make. All them things are choices. These wounds are from self-choices. We can choose to hate. We can choose to have bitterness. We can choose to have unforgiveness. We can choose to take offenses. What does that mean? Well, if we know, if we choose them things, that the symptoms are what we said before, the oppression, depression, fear, anxiety, stress, temper, suicidal thoughts, and stuff of that nature. Now, I'm not saying every single sickness is caused by this wound is a choice. We know those are chemical Im imbalances and things that go on in people's bodies, and I'm not putting blame on anything except for the enemy. In these things but if we choose to not have offenses and we choose not to be bitter if we choose not to hate if we choose to forgive you know and we choose to have pride, pride then the symptoms that we get from that are not just symptoms they're called the fruits of the spirit so now instead of having fear anxiety and you know and all these things of suicidal thoughts and and depression and all these things now we're possessing something that from the choices that we make that would produce joy love peace happiness you know long suffering you know so it's these wounds are really because of the choices we make just like we make them whether we get out of bed in the morning or whether we choose to stay in looking past that and i like that too because if you take number five number five means uh grace in the bible so just like we did he picked up by his shoes. Well, to me, it looks like a dirt behind that, but to me, I like the fact that it looks like it represents grace. Now, if you're going into a battle to fight your giants, you know, to me, I want to take God's grace with me. So that's what I look at is, is if we if we get rid of offense, bitterness, hate, unforgiveness, and pride, we pick up them things right there in our life, then we can look and we can say, we can have God's grace. You know? So we look at the spirit man. What does the spirit mean? What is that? That's what we really are. We are a spirit. Now, when you're looking at your spirit, your major wounds. Now, if I was laying out there on the ground and I had a broken leg on this side and I had a cut all the way on this side, then I'm going to say, "Oh man, look, you got the broken leg. Let's do this. Let's do that." They're going to take care of that wound that's bleeding out that artery for because they know they don't attack that. And, and fix it that you're going to end up dying uh -huh. that's what your spirit wounds are if you start attacking all these body wounds and and soul wounds and stuff like this before you attack your spirit wounds then you're going to end up dying you can't you can't get one ahead of the other you know if i'm laying out there and they look at me and i don't have no blood at all you know, they look at they don't they gonna just say get up and go, you know, ain't nothing wrong with you. They're gonna say, Don't move him, you know. He might have internal bleeding. We don't know. He may have some internal injuries that, you know, it will cause some serious damage if we move him. You know, when we look at our bodies and we look at our spiritual man, we can say, So sometimes we don't see nothing on the outside, but sometimes the inside man is wounded bad. And we 
have to deal with them things. So then, how do we get spiritual wounds? Spiritual wounds come from direct or indirect disobedience of the will of God in our life. So I'm going to say that one more time. Spiritual wounds come from direct or indirect disobedience from the will of God in our life. A.K.A. bottom line is just sin. You know, it's just another way of saying disobedience to God is sin. So if we have sin in our life, we allow sin in our life. The Bible's uh, definition of sin is he that knows to do good and does it, don't do it anyway. Then, to him it's sin. You know, so if you do something like that, then you're causing a, a chronic, you know, those millions and millions of people in the world today that live uh, every day with wounds that never get healed, uh -huh. you know, and it, it's vital to all walk with Christ to know how to identify these wounds in order to move forward in his walk and his will in our life. The, the one thing between the spirit, spirit wounds and the soul wounds is the fact that spirit wounds will kill you. Emotional or soul wounds will deform your character. You know, because it's not normal for you to go through life with with all this anxiety. It's not normal for me to go through life with a temple, you know. In fact, in Proverbs it says that uh, the pride goes before destruction and a hot temple goes before a wall. But um, it's not normal to... Um, go through life with fear. It's not normal to go through life with anxiety. It's not normal to do that thing. If you go through life with hate and bitterness, it, it actually deforms your character. So, real quickly, um, the blood that's in our body, we say the blood is in the life, the, the life is in the blood, and so if, if I have blood in my body and I do not breathe, I will still die. That's very important. Much the blood is. If if, uh, if if I don't have the correct oxygen that goes into my lungs, when I breathe, I breathe in oxygen. Oxygen goes into my lungs, it fills my lungs, it makes my blood, it goes through my heart, and it takes them uh, oxygen and it takes it to the rest of my body. It flows. Now, if I cut the cut the flow of blood off to my big toe. It'll turn cold, blue, black, and then it'll end up dying. They'll say, we'll have to cut it off. Why? Because the lack of flow of the blood to that part of the body. And uh, when, you, when you're uh, looking at that, okay. When you're looking at that, it's important for us to have that oxygen because without that oxygen, it does not take the nutrients to where it's supposed to go. That being said, if I end up with a cut on my arm, the blood in my body actually goes to that spot automatically. And then it starts to clot and it starts to stop that bleeding. And then it's uh, our responsibility to put a bandage over it. We stop it. The blood goes to walk. It starts to clean the infection out. It tells the messengers, homo messengers, to go back and forth to bring it the nutrients it's supposed to get. Basically, it's like setting up a little construction site, and the tissues start really forming back and, and building back. And it's, it's a re repair process of your body. When Jesus Christ comes into your heart, you accept Jesus Christ from your heart, what happens is your spirit man becomes born again. Your spirit man and your spirit is wounds are healed and it becomes a lie now why do i fight all these things why do i fight addictions why do i do all these other things if if i'm my spirit man is good it's because well in uh you know it says that he that do no sin became sin for us that we may be the righteousness of god through jesus christ but when god looks at our spirit and we're born again he's looking at us through the blood of jesus christ he's not looking at us through anything else so therefore our spirit man is good but our soul, just like in Romans 12, we need to renew that on a daily basis. Praise God. No, body definitely ain't saved, you know, because it's constantly warring against us, just like in Ephesians 6 and 11. 
But uh, when Jesus comes into your life, he don't just sit in a recliner on the TV, sweat the floor, whatever, you know. He basically comes in, sets up camp, puts out a construction trailer, you know, pulls out these plans and says, okay, this is what we need to do. We got some dead stuff over here. We got some wounds over here. We got some stuff over here, some corrosion. And he starts pointing, and the blood goes to walk to start walking. Isaiah 53 and 5. He was wounded for all transgressions. He was bruised for all iniquities. The chastisement of all peace was upon him. By his stripes we are all healed. That's good news. That's good news for us. You know, Jesus, this is Resurrection Sunday. You know, Jesus took them transgressions. He was wounded for the transgressions. That means he, he uh, was wounded for the things that the rules and laws that we break the offenses that we make and things like that nature, iniquities, if, uh, the wicked acts, the, you know, the disjust, uh, unjust behavior and things of uh, just the our sinful nature and stuff. He paid a price for all them things. You know what? I know, I know that there was a book that was written, I haven't read it, but I know there was a book that was written called The Seven Places That Jesus Bled. You know, I, I believe that Jesus bled from more than just seven places. I can't believe that Jesus only bled from seven places, but the seven places that Jesus, that Jesus documented, that was documented in the war. I just want to hit on it just real quick, is when he was in the of the city, he went to pray, and when he was praying, he, he sweat and great drops of blood. How did that happen? Jesus wasn't a man that would fear anything. He came across, he came up on situations and, and came across demons and, and legions and, and he, he wasn't afraid of nothing. But this started this started the process of him taking on sin for us. And see, when he sweat, what happened was he said, God, if there's any way in heaven, is there any way that this sin could be passed from me. If there's any way that we can make this happen other than what I have to go through, please let this cup pass. Then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he took on, and then that's when he started taking on, he took on the fear, the anxiety, and the stress. And he, he, he took on so much fear that his, the blood vessels in his great glands busted and sweated out instead of sweat, it came out blood. And then he was bruised. Bruised for all the inner uh, bruises, bleeding on the inside. He bled on the inside for all our inner wounds. He took the stripes on his back for our healings. He took the thorn upon his head. You know that could represent the the uh, mental illnesses and mental stress we go through and things of that nature. He was pierced in his hands for all the things that we touch and get involved with in life. You know that we shouldn't. He was pierced through his feet, the places we walk, and the things that we do that we shouldn't go. He covered us with all that blood for everything that we come through. But I know sometimes when, you know, just by uh, being involved in uh, physical activities and stuff like that nature, um, you know, a lot of times you get busted in the mouth, you get busted in the nose. I believe that Jesus bled from his mouth too when they plucked his build out and they struck him and everything. I can't believe that he didn't bleed from his mouth. I believe he bled from his mouth to cover all the coursings that come out and the negativity and all the gossip and everything else that I don't believe there was one part, you know, when he when he's carrying his cross and he, he fell under the pressure, I can't believe that he didn't skin himself somewhere else where he bled from other parts of his body. I truly believe that Jesus Christ bled from every part of his body to cover every part of all sins that we could ever come across in our life. There was one place that I found interesting and that's when he got pierced in the side. You see, when Jesus bled all these bleed, all these places, right. when he was going through uh, all this, he was alive. He felt every bit of it. But there was one place that he bled from. He bled from not being alive, but he bled from actually being dead. You know, there was one place that he bled that he was dead. And that's when they came and they were going to break the legs. 
you know, because it's coming high day, and they couldn't have nobody being crucified on a high day, you know what I mean? And uh, all these all these things right here are, are a deeper message, you know, that you can go into, but I'm trying to keep it quick. You know, when they went to go break the legs of Jesus, because he, he had to push up to take a breath, you know, and when they came to him and they were going to break his legs, so he was basically drowning in fluid. They seen that there was no movement, there was no life. The soldier took his spear and thrust it through the side of Jesus. Daryl had not just bled blood, but their water and blood both came out. And we know from a medical standpoint that when you when you peel somebody like that and water and blood flows out. It's a sign that says, yeah, he was already dead. And that he was drowned. His fluids built up around his lungs and his heart. But to me, it's in uh, False John. False John 5 and 6, it talks about the blood and the water. Now, if you go over there and read stuff, it's blood and water mix. The blood and the water is a sign of new both. You know, I believe, you know, and this is just Tim talking, that when they pierced his side, it was representing a new ball. There was something new taking place. That he was already passed away. He already paid the price. But when he thrills on that side, that was a sign showing that no longer are we just going to have to worry about flesh and blood, but now that that represents a new ball. So we need to allow the blood to walk in our lives. How do we do that? We know how the blood walks. I went over that quickly. The blood comes in. Oxygen mixes with the blood, carries the blood to our cells. If we don't get the right oxygen with the blood to our brain, we can have a stroke. If we have blood flowing through our heart, but we don't have the right oxygen, we can have a heart attack. Our, our organs will stop uh, not functioning correctly. We will not have energy, you know, if we don't breathe and have the right oxygen in our blood, we just don't perform. If I don't breathe, the blood in my body cannot function correctly. That is the same way with your spirit, man. If I breathe in, my, my oxygen is now the Word of God. So if I take the Word of God and I take in the Word of God and the Word of God mixes with the blood of Christ, it therefore goes out and it starts attacking all these wounds that we spoke about in the body. And the more water that we take in, the more God's water we take in, and the more it mixes with Jesus' blood, the faster we heal. It is important for us, because the Bible says, a man should not live by bread alone, but every water that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So it's important for us to do our part. You know, what's our part? Now, if I know that I'm, um, I got cuts on me, I got wounds, I need to cover them wounds up and protect them from infection. Sin is infection. Sanctification is a bandage. We, we put on a bandage of sanctification to protect us from the things that we, we got in life in the first place. We need to put on wounds to protect our wounds, but we need to put on bandages to protect our wounds from infection. It's the same way with the, with the spiritual wounds. If you're dealing with drugs and alcohol addiction, you got to cover that stuff up and allow the blood to walk in your life. You know, if you're dealing with uh, lust and pornography, you got to you got to cover that stuff up, and you got to not expose that. You got to keep it clean from that infection, and you got to allow the blood to walk in your life. If you're dealing with smoking habits or drinking or, or different habits that you don't want to deal with, you know, them habits, you know, if you're feeling guilty about them habits, you got to cover that stuff up. Protect yourself from that. Emotional stress, fear, anxiety, temples, you know, suicidal thoughts, you got to protect yourself. You got to wrap yourself up and protect you from them thoughts and protect you from them things and allow Christ, Christ's blood to walk on the inside of you. You know, me. I really do have a problem with my temple a lot of times. So what do I do? 
I try to wrap that wound up, and then I wrap it up, and I say, man, I get in a situation, and sometimes, sometimes that wound starts itching, because you know when you start healing, you start itching a little bit, and sometimes somebody comes along, and they poke it a little bit, and sometimes I just get a little bit irritated with it. So I looked down at that wound and I just grabbed the bandage and I said, you know what? This sanctification ain't working for me because of what I have. I ripped that bandage off. I throw it down, you know what I mean? And the next thing I know, I look down and everything the blood was trying to do, I just revolted. it. I just ripped that bandage right off and now the blood, I'm, I'm back to square one. My blood is bleeding out. The next thing I know, I'm just like that. And then it's worse than what it was to begin with. That's right. You know, I'm just, I just go back. And then I have to say, God, forgive me. I got to pick up some sanctification again. And I got to wrap that thing around my wounds. And then I got to say, you know what? I got to take care of this thing if I want to heal from it. You know? So in ending the night, we need to allow the blood of Jesus to walk in our life after we identify the ones that we have. Yes, sir. God said that we'll be destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Right. You know, it's our responsibility to understand what these things do and how they work in our lives so we can address them. You know, the power is there. The blood automatically goes to walk in our life. When I rip that bandage off and I throw it on the ground, the blood of Christ is automatically applied to that area and automatically goes to walk trying to clot it up and stop it. Some people ask, well, I'm, I'm to this point in my life. How do I, How did I even get here? I got all these questions. I got all these things that are coming against me. You know, it ain't that easy just to stop. Come on. You know, when you heal up on the outside, sometimes it takes years to heal the damage that's on the inside. Right. Yep. You know, yes, it, what we see on the outside, uh -huh. you know, you never, never, I'm going to say this, I got to hit on forgiveness too, just real quick, because without forgiveness, that's that's the thing that the people get hung up on really bad. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. Forgiveness is something that you don't approve of what somebody else done. You don't ignore what somebody else done. You say, I forgive them because it's a gift I give myself. Why should I be in bondage because somebody else done something wrong? You know? So I forgive them because it's a gift I give myself. You know? Kenneth Copeland said it like this. He said, to forgive is a choice to obey. To forgive is a decision to obey. You know, it's what we're supposed to do. And it's very important after we preach about the blood, after we preach about heaven, after we do anything without talking about forgiveness. Because he said, if you don't forgive your trespassers, your heavenly father can't forgive you. You know, so I would do you a great injustice if I said enough you and said, you know, you're okay if you're going to heaven, but if you have unforgiveness in your heart, that's okay. No, that's fine. You know, you got to deal with that unforgiveness in your life before you can move forward. That's a vital wound you're bleeding out. You got to stop it. That's right. Can't do it on your own. Those things that, man, you know, I I just, there was sometimes I just couldn't wholly forgive people. I, get, I got some messes in my life, you know. <laughs> I tell you what, I had some pride. I got some messes. But until I learned how to forgive, none of them things I could deal with. I, God had to deal with me and how to forgive people, yes. Yes. you know, and it wasn't easy. Sometimes it wasn't easy. The biggest thing was it wasn't easy to forgive myself uh, for most of them things. I had to learn how to forgive myself. How do we end up in them situations? Because it says the pleasure of sin lasts but for a season. Come on. You know, when I was out, my pleasure was a sin. I didn't care. I was having fun. Right. I lived it up. Right. You know, just like most of us. Then we ended up, you know, in a place where when that season passes, then we're stuck with the addiction. We're stuck with the guilt. We're stuck with the shame. You know, it's not meant for us to be stuck with them things. You know, once that season is passed, then we look at it and we say, well, God, how did I get here? He said, because you lived it up. It's because you, you indulged in sin. You was in pleasure with your sin. But now, it's not no fun to us no more. There's a lot of people that stuck 
in a season in their life because they lived in a season, now it's past. And they don't know how to get out of that season. Get it. You know? And they wake up every morning and they say, I don't want this addiction. Yes, I don't want to do this. You know? Nobody wakes up and says, I don't want to stick a needle in my arm. They know it's an addiction. They do it anyway. Oh. You know? I can testify about that. You know? Oh. I took everything from drugs, you know, heroin, meth, you know? You know, I can tell you what it's like to be addicted. I can tell you what it's like to have hate in my home. You know, I can tell you what it's like, you know, to do them things. But this ain't about me, it's about the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The flesh was a sin last but for a season. Yes, sir. So, how do we protect ourselves from wounds? Well, in Ephesians 6 and 11, it says to put on the whole armor of God. You know, and that's easy to say because those people sitting under the sound of my voice right now and says, you know, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is God's uh, spiritual tones, you know. Those, those people that say, man, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, when it comes to armor of God and that well listed in an army and this and that, and, you know. The, the fact of the matter is, is all it means is we got to learn how to protect ourselves. We got a decision to make. Decision is easy. When I ask the question, have you allowed or will you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart? I'm not saying, hey, will you allow Jesus to move into you so you can have a companion to, you know, the, the Holy Spirit's apparently, he runs alongside us through life. Now, I don't accept Jesus Christ in my heart just so he can just live with me. We can, you know, that that's great. But really what I'm asking tonight is will you allow Jesus to heal your wounds? Will you allow him to come in and allow the blood It don't take much of the war. The war, I tell you what, you take a little bit of the war mixed with the blood, it don't take very much of the Come breath on. when it mixes with your blood to do what it's supposed to do. Yes, because a little bit of breath can give you life oh, yes, thank you, when it's mixed with the blood. Yes, sir. When you take a little bit of the war right. and you wake up, you read a scripture. It don't have to be much. Just uh -huh. read a scripture or something to keep you going. Yeah. It's just that little breath of life that mixes with the blood of Christ to give you life. If you're sick, if you have some stress on your body, if you have some fear, if you're fighting addictions, if you're fighting oppression and repression, if you're fighting you know, these things in your life, you don't have to. There's no reason to. Christ came, he paid that price. He already took that upon him. All we have to do is accept him. I'm not going to say you're going to be healed overnight. It takes years sometimes, you know. There's no way that we can, you know, just be fully healed mentally and spiritually. And Well, spiritually we can because we're covered by the blood. Right. Amen. But Man. when you're dealing with emotional things, you know, I'm going to say this. Never judge somebody on the wounds that they have. Come on. Come on. Come on now. When I was, when I was younger, we used to get in some pretty good sized fights. Uh -huh. And uh, we lived in a neighborhood where they did fight a lot. When I got older and moved back to that neighborhood, we, we fought, you know, there would be 40, 50 of us out there, you know, baseball bats and chains, Woo, we had us a good time, you know, and I remember driving some people to the hospital, I remember getting hit a few times, getting struck on some things and end up with some bad wounds. Yes, sir. We look around, yeah, I got a broken arm, yeah, I got a, I got hit with a baseball bat upside the head. You know, I got I got hope right here. You know, <laughs> you know this. I got a black eye, and then we turn around. We look at old Bob, and Bob don't got nothing. And we look at Bob. We said, "Where was you at, Bob?" You know, every one of us is home. We got some battle wounds, <laughs> but Bob don't have nothing. You know. Well, sometimes I tell you, don't ever be ashamed of the wounds you have. Right. You know, it means you're doing battle. If, if you're doing something, you're going to have some wounds. Come on. Don't be ashamed of them wounds. Yes, sir. 
the shame comes when you don't you don't cover them up. Same, right. you know, if I if I got hit in the eye, two years later I'll come back and still got a black eye, and then, well, what happened? To you? Well, you know that fight two years ago. Like, are you serious? You know? No, heal up from them things. Right. You know, it ain't normal to live with wounds. Yeah, that's right. But don't judge somebody on them. That's right. That's right. Wounds look ugly. And it's okay to have ugly wounds. Yes, sir. Just know that the, the Spirit of God, the, the, the blood of Christ is working on the inside to heal the wounds. That's right. If, you're, if you're tired of living with addictions and habits, I don't care what it is. Mental illness. If you got some things that you just want to try to get under the blood, when we say get under the blood, that's what we mean. Right. You know, we say, you know, let that blood work for us, you know. That's right. That's right. Allow it to in your life. All thing to do is address that spiritual wound. The first thing you do is you just call out to God. And that's what I'm going to leave you in right now. Because it don't matter what you're trying to address in life. If you don't get this right, it, it ain't going to do you no good. Right. You're, just, you're just going to go around in circles trying to this with me if you want to accept Jesus Christ in your personal as your personal Savior but what I'm really asking if you want to be healed from some wounds in your life if you want to be free from addiction if you want to be free from drugs if you want to be free from some bad habits in your life whether it be pornography or whether it be alcohol whether it be cigarettes or whether it just be talking bad about somebody or whether it just be disobedience to your parents or whether it just be a bad attitude to your boss it don't matter what it is you know it don't matter what it is as long as you know that you need some help in that area I ask you to give me life. Father, I'm asking that your blood, that Jesus' blood, would walk in my life to heal me from the wounds that I have. Father, I give you the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Good news is, if you said that simple prayer right now, is you're on a good, you're on a good path to being healed from all your other wounds. Because now your spiritual wound is healed. And that's the biggest wound. You're going to live, you know. You might have to live with some ball, skulls and, and some wounds every once in a while. But but you ain't going to die. So, little baby. The blood that Jesus shed for me.
Bible says that we were not redeemed. We were not redeemed with corruptible things. But we were ransomed by the precious blood of Jesus. And I'm so thankful for the blood because it has never lost its power. It's still rich. It's still flowing. It's still that everlasting flowing that flows through our hearts and that flows into our veins tonight. It's still the blood that heals, the blood that saves, the blood that delivers tonight. I'm thankful for the precious blood of Jesus. Now, may God richly bless you. It's been a fabulous, wonderful, wonderful Resurrection Sunday in 2020. It will be a remembered one for sure. Amen. But God is faithful. God is faithful. We're at Food Bank tomorrow night. Lord bless you. Lord love you. Thank you for coming. If you need something, be in contact with us. Let's check on one another this week. Let them know we love and care about them. You're dismissed in Jesus' wonderful name. Lord bless you. Go in peace alone.